Hi guys and welcome. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at what's inside this box. And what's inside this box, hopefully, is an Anycubic Photon 3D DLP LCD resin printer. So let's get it open and take a look. The unboxing cue epic music. This is the part of the unboxing where you could do with a glamorous assistant. Unfortunately, I don't have one, glamorous or otherwise. We've got nice little chrome packing, a, a UK power leader kettle lead with an actual proper UK 3 pin plug, which is nice to see, a little baggie containing a screwdriver, some hex keys, a plastic scraper, some nitrile gloves, and a surgical type face mask. Fantastic for when uh, I want to play doctor, a user manual. Which we'll have a look at in depth in a little while. Ah, replacement FEP film. That's nice. I wasn't aware that that was in there. Um, an after sales service card. A nice little credit card type of keep in your wallet type of size thing. Um, a card which is obviously a quality control pass fail thing. Oh, a, uh, well, quite a nice fancy looking long handled hex key. H2. That's quite a, quite a nifty looking thing. I'm not sure what that's for. But a long handled screwdriver type. Hex key, which is obviously a purpose for it. A four gigabyte uh, USB memory stick. I'm assuming any memory stick will work, but four gigabyte USB memory stick included with a nice little clippy sort of angled thing that swaps around. And that obviously is the other side of the power supply that plugs into the printer itself. And a 250 milliliters? Yeah, 250 milliliters of basic uh, green UV sensitive resin. Alrighty. So let's take out the printer. Let's move some things aside. Now that we know what's what. And put the printer up here and then we'll have a close up look at it. First impressions are it's really, really nicely made. And for a made in China item, you, you kind of, a lot of people have this preconception that uh, things are going to be a little bit cheap, um, cheap looking or cheap feeling or what have you. It's certainly not the case with this. This this looks like a really good solid quality item. It's all metal um, and alloy. The only plastic bits on the outside to my knowledge as I, that I can see are the screen surround area, the buttons, the power button and these handles here. It has rubber feet on the bottom which adjust in and out so that you are able to level the printer to make sure that you get it perfectly level. Uh, this is something I've, I've not really seen mentioned on other reviews surprisingly but that's a nice little feature. Uh, rubber feet on all four corners and all four are adjustable so that you can get it perfectly level regardless of the surface that you're on. And we currently uh, have all the stickers on the yellow plastic. The original models shipped with blue. Uh, these are yellow, which apparently offer better UV protection. Another thing that I've not seen mentioned on other reviews, this plastic is very, very thick per specs. Um, I was under the impression from pictures and such that I'd seen previously that it was just thin plastic. It's not, it's actually very thick, very solid per specs. And on this side here, we have the power on off switch on a rocker style switch and the USB port for the supplied USB stick. And then turning it round on the back there, we've got the information label, which I'm just covering up, but that's your information label with your serial number and bits and pieces. And this plate here where the exhaust fan uh, exhausts air out and the DC connector, which is also a really nice solid metal construction. Uh, of the type that you might see on um, uh, a musical instrument, such as a, a guitar and that kind of thing. Very, very good quality, solid, um, solid built thing. So what I want to do first of all, before I start peeling anything off or looking at anything inside the printer, um, is just to power this up and make sure that the LCD lights up so I'm going to plug the power lead in, switch it on. 
and I just want to make sure that the LCD lights and it does what it's supposed to do. So we'll just turn that around so you can see that a little bit better. So power on. And that's a good start. We've got the Photon logo and a beep. And we've got a menu. We'll switch that off. What we're going to do now is open this up and uh, take a look inside, remove the bits and pieces from inside of it and get rid of all the plastic. Lift the lid up here. And another thing to mention is down here is a magnet, which also is something uh, I've not seen mentioned, but that, this being metal, that holds the door firmly closed so it's not likely to flap about and come open unintentionally. The door hinges right back so I've got some quite clever sort of folding hinges so it hinges right the way back and sits up out of the way here. The inside is very very firmly solidly packed with foam so nothing's going to move in there. Take this out and inside here we've got the build plate with the levelling you can see that tilts and rocks like that. That's that's with the levelling hex key loosened. And then this is the knob that fastens it onto the Z-axis. So just for safekeeping, um, that's a, a nice sort of smooth, sort of slightly textured anodized aluminium, that is. So I'm just going to pop that back in there for safekeeping just for the moment. And I need to pull this out pulling this forward so we can lift it up a little and you can see how dense and solid that foam is there so that's certainly not going anywhere inside there we've got some um, filters these are the filters for filtering the resin the unused resin from the bath the vat here back into your pot and these if anyone's ever done any automotive paint spraying in a garage, you'll recognize these. These are the kind of strainers that you use after you've mixed up paint before you, uh, as you decant it into your uh, spray gun, you, you strain it through one of these to make sure that there are no lumps and particles and what have you that are going to mess up your paint job, same kind of thing. So in here, we've got the, the Z axis block, which rises up and down. We've only got one axis on this, unlike the Ender 3. Later when I do some test prints and things, I will be drawing parallels with the Ender 3, but I will state for the record, um, or staple the vicar if you're a fan of Peter K, that they are two completely different things and the parallels I will be drawing will just be in, uh, just to give you an idea of the print comparisons and the differences in, uh, in the types of print and, and the quality of the prints. So unscrew these two things here and slide this out. This is solid. It's a solid lump of aluminium. It has a metal frame down there and there's the FEP film, which hopefully you can see, which is drum tight. So um, there's a very good video by uh, Anycubic showing the, how to replace the FEP film, uh, but obviously it's got to be drum tight, as you can tell there. I'm going to stand that up on its edge there. Or well, you can see in here as well, this, this is all the same kind of alum, anodized aluminium and it's got a little pouring lip on one corner for pouring the resin back out. I'm going to stand that on its edge so that I don't damage the FEP film. This is your LCD screen and uh, this is your Z axis. So what I'm going to do just now is we're going to remove the plastic. Ta -da! Okay, so on to assembly. Pay very close attention. This next step is absolutely crucial that you follow this procedure precisely. So um, handle, oh, Sorry, sorry, forgot. I forgot I didn't have an assistant at all. Oh, there we go. Uh, handle and uh, a little Allen bolt and hex key. Bolt, handle. Turn the bolt clockwise or the handle. Either will work. 
or both if you're really feeling uh, sort of you know quite clever and capable and with it and then nip that up so it's nice and tight it's not going to fall off there you go assembly complete at this point right here we're going to have a look through the instruction manual it's a very nice manual um, glossy printed good quality good translations and uh, and quite in depth nice picture of the printer on the front inside we've got some qr codes and links and then the table of contents we've got the packing list precautions technical specifications product overview menu directory assembly and leveling instructions software installation first print instructions and then the faq and machine maintenance on this page you get a list of everything that should be supplied so you can check off once you've taken everything out of the box uh, your printer, your platform, your resin vat, memory stick, resin, etc, etc, as we've gone through earlier. We have a list of precautions, then we have a page of technical specifications. Also gives you the physical dimensions and the, and the weight of the printer as well. Uh, the weight of which we're going to talk more about when we get to the setting it up and doing a print section. And we have a breakdown of the parts here. And then on this page here, on, uh, on page on number five, the menu directory, it gives you a full breakdown of the, the buttons, the three buttons on the front and what each of those lead to and the functions that you have using them. A list of the menu directory and what each function does. Then the assembly and leveling instructions, which is continued over onto this page and it shows you there's a piece of paper, you move the bed down, you tighten it, you level it, you make sure it's level and you make sure the paper um, thickness is set so that you've got the right thickness from the bed and then continued over onto this one. And then into here and then it finishes up here where you reinstall the resin vat. The software installation, for anybody who's pretty much used uh, a Windows machine and installed any software anywhere, is quite straightforward. The software is supplied on the USB stick. I would recommend taking an entire copy of everything that's on the USB stick and saving that to your hard drive. And then it gives you an overview of the software in use and, and what it will look like and the options that you can select for your slicer. For anybody familiar with Cura, I'm guessing, I've not had a look yet myself, but I'm guessing it will be very familiar to Cura and other slicing type softwares. Um, if anything, probably a bit more basic in, in its options. It continues with the software installation for these next two pages, but this is showing more detailed options for the resin curing time, the, the on time, the off time, the, and then the various sort of parameters for layer thicknesses and for um, uh, support thicknesses and positioning and that kind of thing. And then onto your first print instructions, which just walks you through the process of selecting the model, putting it onto the memory stick, fitting it to the printer, selecting it on the printer, and, and then going through the process, removing the print from the print bed and draining the excess resin back into a container through the filter that's supplied. And then we have an FAQ, which is any potential little problems that you might encounter when first setting up. The resins have a 12 month shelf life. And although I haven't read anywhere to this effect, I would personally recommend that they are stored in a cool dark place because that's typically the best storage situation for anything of a volatile nature, anything that, that can cure or set hard um, if left out or anything that can go off or any, you know anything like that. That's the last page of the book. The rear just has the barcode. So that's pretty much the whole thing. Uh, that's the manual in depth without reading it page by page. Obviously you don't want to do that. But what you will be able to do is pause and zoom in or zoom up to full screen and, and read any relevant bits that you may feel are relevant 
that you want to look at in more detail before you decide to go ahead and, uh, and click on the link and buy yourself one of these. We've gone through the unpackaging and what you can expect to find if you're thinking of getting one of these yourself. And we've had a good overview of the printer externally and internally so you know what to expect. That's as much as I'm going to cover in this video because I suspect this will be quite long already. In the next video we're going to clean everything, we're going to level the print bed and get that set up and then we're going to make our first print. So I hope this has been useful for you. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.